Bro, are you scared to see a dead person? Hell no, nah, I ain't scared to see no dead person. But you're not trying. Y'all don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> shit never got in there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> he just died. <laughs> Get out the water, you gon' yeah, die! Yeah, look at that gator coming towards you, man! Buddy... We not finna help your... <laughs> you finna got in! Bro, drowning, what the heck? <laughs> Ain't nobody finna help you, you dumb... <laughs> enough got in there! <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah, yeah, buddy... So buddy dumb. off that 40! Hell yeah, Brian, you knocked the 40! Damn, where he at? Hey, buddy off that... 85, bitch! <laughs> Bro, are you scared to see a dead person? Hell no, nah, I ain't scared to see no dead person. But you're not trying. Y'all don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> shit never got in there. <laughs> oh, shit. He just died. <laughs> bro, what, bro? Holy oh, shit, he died. What the fuck? Hey, bro. Are you laughing? Y'all laughing. Y'all finna go. Hey, say buddy. He dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Come on, bro. This is like no, bro, we stay here. Press that. Buddy been under there for a while now. Oh, he ain't coming back up. Let's slide. No, but we done slurring. Why not, bro? You see what I'm talking it's about? Not, now, you can't rock. I'm gonna jump this kick and go home. That is not. Dang. Damn, bro, just died, though. Like, thinking about that. Damn. 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 We That's just saw Birdie die. We couldn't help with that. We didn't even try to help. Coulda had a hell of a night. Yeah, go help him, Barry. Go help him. No, baby. This man ain't getting back up. Yeah, he. Yeah, he did. But he gone. R. P. It was a scene with no shortage of symbols beneath the softly waving red, white, and blue signs and statues. All part of a uniquely American debate involving veterans, the Constitution, God, and the devil. My thoughts are that uh, if you're going to be calling uh, Satan in to be on your side, you're not going to expect, you don't expect blessings and goodness. Uh, he's what always part, been a... What part of the Constitution is that? It's, it's not in any part of the Constitution, but neither is freedom of speech either. But it was freedom of speech that in many ways started this all. This is what we support. This is what this community supports. Back in January, the removal of a Christian memorial by the city of Belle Plaine sparking outrage. The city citing complaints it violated constitutional obligations to separate church and state. Then in February came a big change. The Belle Plain City Council voting to establish a so-called free speech zone where any religion or group can take part. And it doesn't matter, you know, if you're Jewish, like we said, if you're Jewish, if you're Muslim, if you're American, whatever you are, we're all Americans fighting this war together. But promises of inclusion were quickly put to the test. The Satanic Temple in Salem, Massachusetts, announcing a plan to install a monument of their own. The black cube with a helmet on top intended to honor veterans who may not be Christian. I take it you don't believe in God. Roger. Yeah. You serve your country. Yes, sir. And you want a place down here. Yes, sir. Army Reserve Lieutenant Kevin Lindo says he supports any memorial regardless of religion or background. But others at Saturday's gathering believe constitutional protection comes with exceptions. Freedom there is a freedom of speech, but the freedom comes at a price as well. They are free to believe whatever they want to, but they need to do it on their own grounds, not on public ground. Of the crowd of roughly 200 protesting the Satanic Memorial, some were from out of both city or state. A person's belief sometimes spelled out on a sign, but the facts of the situation often proving elusive. I, uh, if they're not allowed to have a Christian monument, they shouldn't be allowed to have any other monument here. That's they, they are allowed to, though. They are allowed to. Um, I guess standing up for what I believe in personally, then, is why I would be here. And for counter-protesters in support of the satanic memorial, belief was just as important. Not just in a religion, but in their constitutional right There's to take part. All it's or right none. To, yeah. All or none. 
Now, we can see this very clearly with what's going on in California. They have a cancer-causing chemical that they found in massive quantities in some small California towns. It's called TCP. It's actually called 123-TCP. It's an abbreviation for uh, trichloropropane. And this is in the Central Valley of California. They say hundreds of wells that provide water to a million people are tainted with a chemical that some experts say is one of the most powerful cancer-causing agents in the world. They say that Environmental Protection Agency has concluded it's likely to be carcinogenic to humans. The California Water Board warns residents not even to shower with this tainted water because they might inhale the chemical. NBC News is in one of these towns, uh, Arvin. They tested the water for TCP. A state-certified lab found more than six times the amount that the state says is acceptable. Now, where did this come from? It's used as a degreasing agent in the production of plastic products. And there's a couple of corporations that put it there. It was Shell, Cor Shell Oil and Dow Chemical. They saw an opportunity decades ago to take a hazardous waste stream at their chemical plants and put it into barrels and sell it to farmers who would then inject it into the ground. Now, there's, uh, that's according to a lawyer who is representing 30 different communities that are suing these two corporations, Dow and Shell, to get them to pay for a multi-million dollar cleanup filtration. They say the companies, however, one in lawsuits going back in 2010, but they have settled other lawsuits. And recently they lost their first lawsuit to Central Valley City, two hours north of Arvin. The jury awarded Clovis, California, $22 million to treat contaminated wells and remove it from the wells. They say among the documents that this lawyer found is an internal memo in which Dow scientists claimed that TCP was garbage. They acknowledged that it had little utility in killing pests. Presumably that's what they were telling the farmers here. Put this in your ground. Uh, you can use it as a pesticide. They say, no, actually, we know it's not a pesticide. We just want to get rid of it, and we want to charge people for it. It's kind of what they do with fluoride, isn't it? The Washington Post reports assisted suicide is legal and available in Washington, D.C. for the time being. The law took effect on Monday, a week after a U.S. House panel voted to repeal the city's Death with Dignity Act. Officials now say doctors can begin the process of prescribing life-ending drugs to terminally ill patients. The D.C. Health Department also launched a website where physicians can register to participate in the Death with Dignity program. Patients must be older than eight, with less, 18 rather, with less than six months to live in order to be eligible. In his prison cell at Guantanamo in 2003, 16-year-old terrorist and Canadian citizen Omar Khadr weeps quietly during a break in interrogation. A year earlier in a firefight in Afghanistan, a wounded Khadr threw a hand grenade over a wall, killing American Delta Force Medic Sergeant Christopher Spear and blinding another U.S. soldier, Lane Morris. On July 7th, almost four years since Khadr's transfer back to Canada, the Canadian government issued a formal apology and a cash settlement of $8 million to Cotter, compensation for his imprisonment at Guantanamo, during which Cotter alleges he was tortured and subject to sleep deprivation in violation of Canadian law. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I think you're getting good medical care. No, I'm not, you're not here. A former U.S. military authority with intimate knowledge of the case told Fox News there is no evidence that Cotter was mistreated or tortured at Guantanamo. He notes that all interrogations done by foreign governments were monitored by U.S. authorities on closed circuit TV. The settlement, though, has outraged the family of the deceased Spear and survivor Morse, who won a $134 million wrongful death suit against Cotter in a U.S. court in 2015, and are now trying to get Canada to recognize the settlement. He had a bad day at Get. Mo, he didn't have his shoulder to cry on at Getmo, and you want to give him eight million dollars? Where is the scale? Where is the justice there? There, is, there is none. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau acknowledges that Canadians too are divided over the settlement, but that it has no choice after its Supreme Court ruled the interrogation of a youth subjected to sleep deprivation to be offensive to Canadian standards. The Charter of Rights and Freedoms protects all Canadians, even when it is uncomfortable. After the settlement, Cotter offered this apology to his American victims. I'm really sorry for their pain. This is not uh, my intention. Um, so this is a time for you know reconciliation and hopefully not forgetting, but you know moving on and healing. Lawyers for Spears and Morris requested freezing Cotter's assets, but a Canadian judge threw out that request last week, calling it, quote, extraordinary pending a trial.
In Saudi Arabia, a young woman has sparked fierce debate after posting a video of herself wearing a mini skirt on social media. The clip was first posted to Snapchat and has been shared on Twitter and other sites. Critics have called for her arrest. While supporters have praised her bravery, arguing she should have the freedom to wear what she wants. Saudi Arabia has strict dress code laws. Women must wear long, loose robes in public. Most cover their hair and face with a black veil. A big fight over bathrooms is still underway in Texas. Republican Governor Greg Abbott has convened a special 30-day session that starts tomorrow and bathrooms are on the agenda. Conservatives in Texas want a bathroom bill similar to that HB2 bill in North Carolina. Their bill restricts people to using bathrooms that correspond with the gender on their birth certificate. The governor, who's up for re-election next year, has put bathrooms on a list of 20 bills he'd like to see lawmakers pass this session. Time now for campus craziness. The news out of Evergreen State College in Washington really is a metaphor for what's happening on the left more broadly. It is bizarre. So bizarre, it feels like a Twilight Zone episode where up is down, black is white, and howling mobs represent free speech and tolerance. Sadly, of course, this is not television. This week, an Evergreen student told trustees how she is vilified and silenced solely because of her race. Keep in mind, this is happening in America. Meanwhile, a professor claimed that Evergreen simply isn't extreme enough. That's the real problem. Watch. My name is Mackenzie, um, and I'm a current student at Evergreen. I have been to several meetings to speak. I've been told several times that I'm not allowed to speak because I'm white. This school seems to focus so much on race that is actually becoming more racist. Because I choose not to focus on race, I have actually been labeled a racist and a white supremacist. If anyone took the time to actually know me, it's not true at all. The work toward equity and inclusion was and is not proceeding fast enough for our students and frustrates them and staff and faculty as well. I want to advocate that each of us, all of us, strategically and thoughtfully choose to listen, find, and tell the stories of what happened, stories that understand social change to be messy and righteous difficult and necessary. That's what fascism looks like in 2017. John Daniel Davidson is a senior correspondent at The Federalist and he joins us now. John, part of me feels a little guilty for giving so much airtime to this insignificant college in the Pacific Northwest, but I think it's important because I think it says something much broader about what's happening to the American left. This is a pretty familiar series of steps we're watching. Do you recognize this? Absolutely. This corresponds to a pattern we've seen playing out all over the country over the last couple of years in Berkeley, in Maine, you know, for coast to coast. I mean, even at Mizzou, uh, a couple of years back, it started with Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, and, you know, Evergreen is a special case, but as you say, it's kind of a canary in the coal mine. Evergreen has been kind of a kooky liberal college for decades. Uh, but what's happening there is kind of the logical consequence of left-wing radical uh, theory playing out on college campuses all over the country. So I think one thing that that professor, the one who described violence th threats as, quote, righteous, one thing she said I think does point to the truth of what's going on here. She said, in effect, our students have been told to expect that things are going to change much faster than they've actually changed. Isn't that part of it? Students have been taught that the country is irredeemably racist and that they have a responsibility to make everything perfect immediately. If you tell kids that, why should you be surprised when they riot? Yeah, exactly. And I think it's, it's also a consequence of these students being very sheltered. You know, it's not just college. They've gone through high school, in most cases, without ever really being challenged. So their biases have been confirmed by their teachers from a very young age. College, which is supposed to be a time when you expand your horizons, when you challenge your assumptions, has never really happened for them in that way. They've had their biases confirmed and reinforced. And as you say, they've been told that change needs to happen really fast and a specific kind of change. And when they encounter people they disagree with, they kind of lose their minds. 
And that's what we see in Evergreen. That's what we've seen at uh, Middlebury College. That's what we've seen at UC Berkeley. Um, it, it's a big problem, uh, and it's, it comes from kind of a shelteredness in college students today. For I sure. Think. But you're also, I think we've reached the stage in the revolution where it's starting to consume itself. The snake is eating its own tail. I mean, there are no conservatives at Evergreen. The guy they were mad at, Professor Brett Weinstein, is a totally sincere, I think, principled, but progressive. He's a lefty. He's not a Trump voter. He's not a right winger in any sense. And now they're trying, you know, they're trying to kick him off campus. Are you struck by how this is kind of the left versus liberals? Yeah, I mean, it's exactly as you say, this is sort of the left eating its own tail, which is, you know, as we say before, canary in the coal mine, this is the logical consequence of this kind of yeah. rhetoric. If you're taught that speech is violence, then you will resort to violence to suppress speech you don't like. Exactly. And that's what's happening here. It's very anti enlightenment. You know, we spent centuries getting to the point where we don't burn people at the stake for the things they say. <laughs> right. uh, and that's exactly what's happening here. No, that's that's really nicely put. And watch, how would you like to run the Democratic Party with all of these people in it? Boy, I'd be afraid. They've unleashed forces they can't control. And I'd be afraid if I were them. John, thank you for that. That was insightful.